So in today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to build more accurate arrows at home. So I just recently purchased some new arrows, so I'm gonna take you through the steps that I've taken to build the most accurate arrow that I can make so that I can be assured in the field that this thing isn't gonna fail on me and it's gonna hit where it needs to. So there are a few essential tools that you're gonna need in order to do this. You need an arrow scale that'll weigh out grains. You're gonna need an arrow squaring tool and you're gonna need an arrow spinner. So with that, you can buy those for about a hundred bucks or so or under. Those three tools are pretty essential in this build. Um, but other than that, we're gonna go ahead and get started and we'll show you that process. Well, as you can see, these came as a bear shaft. They are 32 inches in overall length. I have about a 28 inch draw length. I'm gonna cut my arrows at 27 and a half. So that basically gives me two inches to cut off of the back side and two and a half on the front side. And that way, that'll ensure that I have the most straightest part of the arrow in the center of it. And that'll give me the most accuracy moving forward. All right, the first step in this process, you're gonna wanna put your arrows on a spinning tool here, and then you're just gonna wanna spin the arrow. And you're gonna wanna look and see where you have any imperfections, either you're on the front of the arrow or on the rear of the arrow. And on this arrow, I can see that there's a little bit of wobble on this end here. Well, now that we've spun all our arrows on the arrow spinner, now is the time we go ahead and cut our arrows. And in your case, if you don't have an arrow saw, you can take it down to your local archery shop and you can tell them that, hey, I want two inches cut off the back end and I want an inch off the front and they'll go ahead and do that for you. Um, we just recently purchased one uh, because in our family, all five of us shoot archery and we go through arrows quite often. So it just made sense for us to go ahead and purchase one and now we can do our own so we don't have to take them in all the time and have them cut. So we're gonna go ahead and out to the garage and get these cut. So our first step in cutting our arrows is making sure our measurement is correct. And from the spin test, we determined that we're gonna take off two inches off the back end of the arrow. So we're gonna go ahead and set our saw up to 30 inches, giving us two inches to cut off. A few helpful tips as you're cutting your arrows. Number one, you don't wanna put any pressure on the middle of the arrow to get an uneven cut. Second thing is you wanna make sure that your arrow is seated all the way into the back of the arrow saw. And then finally, you want to rotate your arrow as you're cutting it opposite of the way the wheel is spinning. When setting the depth of the blade, you want to be sure to set the depth just so that it cuts through the first side of the arrow. Once we take care of the back end of the arrow and square that off, then we'll go ahead and move on to the front end of the arrow shaft. All right, this is where your squaring tool comes in handy and is very important, especially on the knock end, because this is the spot that actually leaves the arrow, or excuse me, leaves your bow lastly so if there's any imperfection on this end of the knock end of the arrow it's going to kick your arrow out so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and square that in let's give it a few turns against that little piece of sandpaper there make sure she's squared up All right, now we're going to go ahead and cut off the front end of the arrow shaft. Now that we've got our arrows cut, we're gonna go ahead and weigh out all of our components so that we can assemble them. And then we're gonna to try to basically match up the components with the arrows so that we get all of them as equally weighted as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our arrows first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh these and then I'm gonna sort them lightest to heaviest so that we can match them up. 16, four. Sixteen six. Fifteen eight. So 
So right now I've got all of my arrows within one grain of each other, which is extremely good. And I just want to show you guys a little example of how much a grain is. I have a little piece of plastic here. And it's 1.4 grains. So I'm getting pretty nitpicky here. That's probably not going to make much of a difference in my arrows. But again, I'm trying to make them in as accurate and as equal as possible. So I just got done wearing the, weighing the outserts and they're all within a grain again as well. So that's, that's really good. Um, so again, I've got them laid out from lightest to heaviest and I will basically match those with these arrows. And then by the end, they're probably going to be pretty darn close. Um, might even be better than within a grain. So we'll see how that works out. But I'm just going to go ahead and finish off these knock collars, uh, the inserts, and the knocks doing the same thing. All right, now that we've got all our arrow components all laid out and all organized from lightest to heaviest, we're basically going to go ahead and install them together so that we can build the most equal arrows that we can. So basically starting with the heaviest, I'm going to match those up with the lightest components of the arrow so that they match up. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean out the inside of the arrow with some denatured alcohol or alcohol, whatever you have. As you can tell, that's pretty dirty and we want to make sure that our components stick in there really well with the glue. So we need to clean those out really well. All right, now I'm just gonna use a little hot melt here to install the outsert. I'm gonna put a dab of glue around it. I'm just gonna brush it over to melt it on a little bit. We'll let that dry on and then we'll just pull that excess off in a little bit. Well, it's been a few days since we glued up our components on our arrows. We just wanted to give them time to set. Now the next step in uh, making these accurate arrows is to number one, clock tune your arrow, and number two, bear shaft tune them. So we're gonna take you through that process here and show you what that's all about. All right, the first step in this process is called clock tuning your arrows. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our arrow and we're going to set it in our bow and we're going to shoot at a blank target only about five or six feet away. And basically what we're looking for is we're looking for the bow's natural turn of the arrow once it's shot. So I'm going to take a look at this little tab on this knock here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that it's pointing to the left. I'm going to shoot my bow into the target and we're going to see which way that arrow wants to rotate once we shoot it. So you can see on the tab of the arrow is pointing down. It was starting to the left there. So basically what that tells me is that that arrow is turning left out of my bow. And that's pretty typical for most right-handed shooters. A lot of it has to do with the string and the serving. But what that means is that I'm going to go ahead and once I'm ready for fletchings, if I'm gonna do an offset, I'm gonna offset it to the left. Or if I want to do a helical, I'm going to want to do it to the left because basically what's going to happen is that arrow is going to start spinning out of the bow and I want it to continue in that same direction that that bow wants to shoot it at. And so if I get myself a left, like three degree offset, that arrow will continue to spin left 
as it goes down range. If I were to put a right offset or a right helical on it, what would happen is it would come out of the bow left, knuckle ball in the air for a little bit, and then the veins would take over and then spin it back to the right, which I don't really want. I don't want that knuckle ball effect. Again, it's like a, a rifle and a, a bullet. It continues to spin until it hits its target, and that's kind of what we want to do with these arrows. Okay, now that we've got our arrow clock tuned, now we're going to go ahead and bear shaft tune. And this is a really important step in building the most accurate arrows you can. A lot of people don't do this because they already have arrows that are already fletched from the store, and this is a really critical step. So basically what I have here, I just have a homemade paper tune jig here. You can find out how to make those online under 30 bucks, pretty cheap. Very useful tool if you're uh, doing this kind of stuff at home. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this arrow several times into this target and I'm going to find out which one gave, gives me the best bullet hole by just simply turning my arrow about a quarter turn each time I shoot. And hopefully we'll show you what happens here, but basically what's going to happen is this arrow is going to flex differently depending on the spine of the shaft. And we want to find out which spot is the best and mark that spot. So we'll take you through that process here. The first step is to mark a spot on your arrow. And I'm just going to use the graphics here. There's actually a little seam on there. I'm going to put that straight up and down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a process and I'm going to find out which way that this arrow shoots out of my bow the straightest. Now what I have here is I have just a homemade uh, paper tune jig. This gives you the best results just by being able to see where the bullet hole is. So you can see what's going on here. We've got my arrow entering the target right here and it tearing probably about an inch and a half left. So that flexed out of my bow pretty good. And again, if I had fletchings on there, that would probably correct some of that. But you can tell that that's not coming out of my bow straight. So we're gonna try to clean that up. All right, now shot number two, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rotate my seam 90 degrees to the right on my arrow shaft, basically rotating my knock. And go through the same process and we'll see if we get a little bit better tear. So we've got much less of a tear on that one, so that's actually getting better. I will go ahead and do a third shot by rotating it again. We'll see if we can clean it up so that we have a perfect bullet hole. That's what our ultimate goal is. Another quarter turn. So that seam is pointing straight down right now. Third shot. We're closer, a lot less of a tear there between that one and that one. So shot one, shot two, shot three, it's getting better. I think this last turn is probably gonna be just about perfect. All right, shot number four. Let's see if we can get a perfect bullet hole. And that's what we're looking for. That's a pretty darn, pretty close to perfect. Now again, it, don't beat yourself up over this. You could go through this process and turn that and fine tune it, and you still may never, never get a perfect shot. But again, that's really, really close. That's what we're looking for. And the, the veins will help take over and straightening that out in the end. But that's quite a difference from our first shot. So you can see how that arrow flexed out of my bow differently every time I turned that shaft. So now we basically found the shaft of that spine. We're gonna mark that with a marker here. I'll show you how to do that. So you can see on my arrow, I've got a little tab on my knock and that's the spot where we found the perfect bullet hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark that with just a marker here. I'm gonna line those two up and I'm gonna mark that spot. 
And that tells me that's where my arrow flexes the best out of my bow. And I've basically found the spine there. And then that'll help me when I'm starting to fletch my arrows where I want the uh, index feather. So again, really important step just to mark that and make sure you know where that is. Now that we have our arrows bear shaft tuned, now is the time when you can go ahead and start fletching your arrows. And this is kind of the fun part about building your own. Now is the time when you can decide whether you want a long fletching, a short fletching, you want a four fletch, a three fletch configuration. You can even do a six fletch configuration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up mine with a, uh, a 2.75 tack driver vane. Um, I'm gonna set it up in a three fletch configuration with about a two to three degree offset. And again, I say that because I'm not really sure on what my jig, the degrees of offset. I just know that I'm gonna make an offset on it. I have a Jojan six fletch arrow jig here that I'm gonna use. Um, so we'll get started on that and show you how all of this works. The first step is making sure that we align our index feather 90 degrees off of that mark that we made earlier for our bear shaft tune. And I'm gonna be going with a three fletch and I'm gonna have a black feather as my index feather and two whites. So I'm gonna go 90 degrees of that mark and I'm gonna install my first fletching for the index feather. A lot of people wonder whereabouts you're supposed to set this first fletching. And I've always found that about an inch and an eighth from the end of the arrow is what works best for us here. So I've already got it marked on my jig here. I've got a little mark on the bottom down here. So I'm gonna basically place my vein right in there, put it right on that mark. And then when I orient that onto the jig and onto my arrow, that'll be about an inch and an eighth from the end of the arrow. Not the throat of the arrow, but just the absolute end of the arrow. And again, that's all personal preference. I've seen people do it at five eighths of an inch. I've seen people do an inch. It really depends on if you have a longer fletching or maybe the shorter two inch blazer veins or something like that, you can go a little bit closer to the end, but something just to keep in mind. I've glued a lot of arrows in my time and I found that this primer pen with this glue, and again, it really isn't specific to the brand, but you have to use the primer pen with the glue, otherwise they just don't seem to stick very well. So just a little swipe of the primer pen. A decent amount of glue, but not enough where you're gonna gob it all over the side, but you do want enough so that you're gonna get it on all sides of the vein. And then in just one motion, I'm just gonna stick it in place, press down and hold. I like to wiggle it just so it gets any air bubbles out. And that should hold after about five to 10 seconds worth. You can take that clip off. Well, you can see there's a little bit of glue on there. So one step that you can do to prevent that, but even before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that there's no air bubbles in it just by pressing down in case that jig didn't do its job. And then from there, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe off the excess glue with a Q-tip. Get a nice clean edge there. Well, now that we've got all of our fletchings glued up, the last step in building your own arrows is to go ahead and weigh out all of your arrows now that they're finished and we have all the components on them from lightest to heaviest. Do the same thing with your field points, weigh them out, line them up from lightest to heaviest, and then match them up depending on if you need a tenth of a grain here or there out of either your arrow or your field tip. And that way, in the end, you will have a set of arrows that are within probably one to two grains, which is really, really good. Um, and that they're gonna be a really accurate arrow for you. You've done all the legwork going all the way through the process. Um, and I hope this video helped you guys understand that building your own arrows isn't really all that difficult. It takes a little bit of time. And I know a lot of it's a little bit nitpicky and we're talking grains here and grains there. But again, then me as an archer, I know that it's not my equipment because I built them to be the most accurate they can be. And now that it's on me as the archer to go out and perform and, and make those shots. So 
Again, you can do this for relatively cheap. You don't have to go buy a lot of equipment. Again, most of this stuff is pretty minimal in price, um, except for maybe the arrow saw. And again, you can have your local archery shop cut those for you. But otherwise, you can do it for relatively cheap and inexpensive, and it's just gonna go a long ways in making you a better archer. So I hope this helps, and stay tuned for our next video.